sewing techniques. And today I'm going to be working on uh, painting my bustle hooks. So this is definitely just a part of life around here. There are different ways to color match your bustle hooks. Um, one way I like to do is just quite ahead of time. I have me or some of my girls that help me um, get these out and we just hand paint them. And we just paint them with chalk paint. And this is mixed with ivory. It's not stark white. I just find the, the ivory that I have access to locally um, is pretty dark. So I get the white and just add a little bit of ivory to it. So other ways that you can do this is, of course, uh, spray painting. Um, that's an excellent way. Um, Katie uh, from Kate's Alterations in uh, Australia. Why did I say Katie and then Kate's Alterations? Whew, you guys know what kind of day this is going to be. Anyways, um, Kate has a really interesting way of doing it. She's got, it looks almost like a shoe box and she's got like strings going across and she hooks these onto the, maybe they're wires, they're fine gauge wires maybe. She hooks them onto the wires and then she spray paints them hanging so she can get them from all angles um, with like a matte finish. It is a big key to use chalk paint or matte paint. Um, that way they're not like, you know, reflecting a little light or something. Um, and maybe we'll get a setup like that sometime, but we haven't as of yet. Um, one other sewist and I were talking about maybe um, having like a spare oven. <laughs> the things we do, right? Having like a spare oven, like if you get rid of your old oven or something, have it in the garage and do like powder coating that would be the ultimate if you could like literally bake on some enamel and then that would never chip, right? As far as chippiness goes, this stuff does chip a little bit. Um, but basically the, the bustle only needs to be hooked once and look good, right? The wedding day. So we have ours like pre-painted a light ivory. And then like the title mentioned, sometimes we color match. So we'll mix in a little blush or or amethyst or whatever color we need. Um, and so we have it pre-painted. And then after we demonstrate on the bride to the family members how to hook the bustles, um, then sometimes I go back in and just will, you know, barely touch it. And of course, be careful not to get it on the dress. But that's usually not a problem. And I would use a finer uh, brush than this for that. So... Just letting everybody get on board here. Is the weather dreary where you are? As you guys know, in the U.S., we are getting like Arctic bombed right now. So everybody is getting like drenched and like freezing rain, snow, just very cold rain. I asked my husband this morning, I said, what is the temperature down in Texas going to be? And tomorrow, I forget what it is. I'm thinking it's like the teens. If any of you are in Texas, tell me what it is. He's, he called it out. It was something crazy, like 18 or something. I don't know if I'm making that up. But, um, oh, so it's even yucky in Florida. Let me look at these. Hello from Elizabeth. Hello, Elizabeth. And then let me see. Hello, everybody from Hanley. I so love the Thursday live stream. Thank you. I'm hoping so. You know, guys, I'm not a quitter. But I would definitely quit the live stream if you guys didn't love it. I'm definitely here for you guys. Um, I like doing it. It doesn't bother me. But I could do better things uh, with my time, of course, if there was no interest. So you guys keep letting me know there's interest and we are going to keep doing them. So that's cool to know. All right. Let's see here. Oh, my goodness. Erin, where I am, we're getting almost two feet of snow in the next two days. Hello, y'all. It's really yucky here in Florida. Georgia, very rainy and dreary. That's what it is here, rainy and dreary. Erin, I finally made it. Oh, my goodness. Erin sounds like she had a hard time. Welcome back. 
<laughs> Thank you, Maria. You're faithful. You have like really faithful attendance. Oh, guys, how is the audio today? I tried to like beef up my audio. So I was telling them in the uh, virtual retreat, like what I was doing with the money for the virtual retreat. Um, we have personally spent none of that money. All of it, um, so far at least, um, has been reinvested. So we'll see if there's any leftover where we actually get to make any. But um, I reinvested in um, lighting and audio and equipment stuff. So as you know, it's really expensive. And I felt like it was important to level up. So let me know if the sound is good. So let me bring the mic closer to me. Can you hear me? Like, does this sound closer than this does? Because I have... Um, I have a wireless lapel mic on right now. And it's interesting to know if my phone is picking up or if you guys are hearing the wireless sound. So let me know about that. But yeah, so I'm just going to be doing like real world stuff for a sewing shop. And I know some of you guys use different things. Like some people like clear buttons. Some people like to use the satin covered buttons for bustles. And sometimes that's appropriate. Um, I, I'm personally opposed to using the satin buttons. I'm not coming after you. If you do, you know how I am. You do you. I don't care to use them because I've seen them pop apart too many times, um, under pressure. So I don't like that. So what I do is sometimes I do use a clear button. I feel like they're a little too flashy sometimes too, bouncing some light back, um, so that's why I prefer like something like the hook with the matte finish on it. Um, even if it does chip a little bit, I find it's still less eye catching than a flat button that's doing this like reflection thing. Um, but again, you do you. And I also have seen buttons break in half. I've never seen these hooks break. So let me show you. These are linked to on the products page of my website. But these are the prim um, number three. It's one gross, but um, they're called white hooks. Even though you see this, the nickel is considered white. Please make that make sense, right? But that's industry standard. The, the white hooks are considered that. So um, I don't like the ones that are called bridal that are pre-painted and that the eyes like the, the this part the holes in the hook, they, um, they're kind of squared off. I don't like that kind, even though that's what this is made for. They bend. These are so strong. So that's why I use these. All right. Let me see comments. <gasps> Noreen. Oh my goodness. Wind chill is 45 degrees below zero in North Dakota. Blizzard again. Oh my word. I cannot imagine. Oh, Amy, lately prom dresses have trains and having to paint hooks and eyes all colors to match the rainbow of prom dresses. Um, Amy, doesn't that kind of like make you feel really special about your work, though? I find like when I custom color things, it just kind of gives me a little boost. And I'm like, ooh, like we're custom around here, you know, and I'm sure it does that for the client, too. So Suzanne and Elizabeth both say the sound is great. Yay. Nice. Okay. Good to hear. So I have had some questions about, and this, look at this paintbrush is like worn slap out. Um, but I have had questions about the process. Okay. So this finger is going to get paint on it, <laughs> but I kind of like put my fingernail down on one side Okay, and I come in around the top, across the hook, and then I paint the sides and the little hole part on one side. All right, so that's what I do. I'm going to go through on one side, the same side for every one. Go from the back, up and over, make sure I get the sides real good, particularly this side, and then do this little hole part. All right. All of them like that. And then when I'm done, 
when they're almost completely dry, I try to nudge them loose. They're kind of harder to pop off once they're like completely dry. And at that point they might chip. So then I kind of like knock them loose. And then when they're completely dry, I, I hold over on this side, the painted loop. And I do the other side of it coming up the side and I put coat number two along the top and the hooky part. So that gives you like one coat where you're going to be stitching and two coats on the hook part. And it completely dries in between. And so I have found that does minimize the chipping. So anyways, what I thought I would do with today's plan is because when I'm sewing, I can't look at the comments um, in live time, but with this I can. So I thought we'd primarily do like a Q&A today. Um, and of course, I could sketch for you if you have a question. Um, but I thought I could just paint these and wind some bobbins today while we visit and talk shop. Um, also, if you have any questions with pictures, remember if you ever have a sewing question for me, the best way is not email. The best way is Instagram DMs. I wish YouTube would come out with some awesome messaging features. Wouldn't that be so cool? Like, why? Why do all the other apps have private messaging and YouTube doesn't? It's the weirdest thing. But anyways, um, yeah, pictures are best um, with sewing questions in Instagram DMs. And then that way I can answer with a voice memo and sketches. But if you ever want to present your question to a whole forum of BST besties, don't forget we have Discord. Okay. Discord is an app that's like a group chat app and it's by like link invitation only. So everybody in the group is like-minded and they're in this community. And I am so excited because like, you know, sometimes you start on a new platform and you just don't know how it's going to take off or, you know, if the community is going to like it, or if it's going to resonate. Discord has been awesome for our group. I love to see um, there's like sourcing. We have a sourcing channel on there. Um, we have a stumped sewing questions channel. Um, and then we, we have general, of course. Um but yeah, it's been super active. So I'll put that after the live stream, I'll put another fresh discord link in my stories on Instagram. And don't forget on Instagram, I'm at bridal sewing. So if you guys have not joined discord yet, you're missing out. That's really cool. So it's an app. You just download the discord app and you get to sign into our community and I always say it's like Facebook groups, but without the drama. <laughs> and we have it very well moderated. I kind of help mod it. And then so does um, Hannah. Um, Hannah Q's alterations. She does an awesome job. She's like the bomb. The bomb.com. She knows what's going on. All right, so let me read these. Amy, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Good. Here in Indiana, we are waiting on the snow and Arctic blast. I have a bridal fitting tonight, and I hope she gets here and home safely. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen to my appointments over the next couple days. Um, I already have one girl that her flight is delayed, and so she's going to have to reschedule. And then I'm trying to think. I think somebody else already kind of like preemptively, that's not the right word. That's not the right use of that word. She kind of like from the very get go was just like, I'm just going to reschedule. <laughs> I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> and then um, I'm kind of wondering about tomorrow's girl. I need to reach out to her and see what's going on. A lot of times it's funny. They'll say, 
well, I'm from, you know, insert northern state here, and we don't close down over bad weather. I'm coming along anyways. And they kind of will say it like in this snooty little sound, like, like that they feel like superior because like, it is like a common stereotype that people have of Southerners that they don't know how to drive in the snow and they freak out. Um, and it is grounded in some truth. Number one, they don't get a lot of snow. So they just naturally have less experience driving in it. They also have not purchased cars with the idea of harsh winters in mind because they don't get harsh winters, right? So everything shuts down because you know, the public transportation isn't outfitted for it. People don't have the appropriate cars. Also, a lot of times when people complain about how we freak out, they're from like flatlands. And anybody who has driven in different like terrain conditions can attest. There's a whole other level of driving um, when you compare driving on ice and snow in flatlands with a four wheel drive. And with some type of like um, state road uh, maintenance that's made for ice and snow versus like driving on hills and curves and steep embankments with a two wheel drive, perhaps a rear wheel drive. And your state doesn't even have a budget for snow removal because it happens so infrequently. So that's kind of where we're at. That is the whole picture that I try to give my brides because sometimes they're like, I can show up. It'll be fine. And they're like, they're thinking that our roads are going to be taken care of like the roads where they came from. And then they get here and they freak out. <laughs> The thing they were judging the Southerners for, they freak out and they're like, oh, your roads are not clear. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Literally, when it snows here, we have town workers get out with, um, they put snowplow uh, attachments on pickup trucks and um, they'll get out with skidsters and shovels, guys. I'm not even kidding. The town workers get out there with shovels and snowblade attachments on regular trucks and dump trucks, and they push the snow that way. So the whole town does not get pushed. So surprise on surprise on the brides who are expecting a cleared situation in my town. So yeah, when we get snow, I don't know how long I'm going to be snowed in. Hopefully you guys... Um, you know, it's kind of scary. Hopefully your business won't suffer over the weather because you know how it is. Business is kind of slower for us over the holidays. Well, for anybody, right? Because people are going to parties and, you know, family time and whatnot. And then, uh, so they're already not really wanting to schedule in December. They feel like they're a little bit bigger size because they've been indulging all the things. And then when weather hits, we're like, Oh no, I only had like three days left in December that I could even work that wasn't marked off by the holidays. And um, then you lose, you lose those, those people and you don't make that money until like mid January then. So I hope your people don't bail on you. So guys go ahead and leave some questions in the comments. Um, let's, you can ask questions about anything, but just to jog your memory, maybe you have a question about a bustle. Okay. Um, and we do get bustling questions in the discord sometimes too, which I think bustling questions are so interesting because um, you never 100% know how you're going to bustle because styles change and um, we need to do different things. Someone was saying in discord the other day, it was super cool they did a French bustle and the closures were so cool. The clasps, they used one of those um, lobster claw, you know, you, you pull, wait a minute. It goes like this. You open it like this, but the, the lower part of the hook is down here. So where, where it's getting pressure is not this thing. So you go like this. 
You know that jewelry thing that I'm talking about? She used those like a little bit larger size. Um, cause obviously they need to be strong. And then she used like, um, the rings for like drapery rings. Oh, that's one thing I need to tell you guys. People ask me where are the rings for making, um, French bustles or, you know, you can even make like the Roman shade style bustles, which I think are hilarious. You, you just, and the dress comes up like this in a series of like French bustle tucks. And it, it looks like like balloon drapery in the back. It's super fun. But anyways, people will ask me where to get those rings for French bustles and they are drapery rings. That's what you're looking for. So yeah, that was her hardware for her French bustle. And I thought that was the coolest idea. I hope she doesn't mind me sharing that because like, you know how we share around here and she didn't say not to. So I guess that's okay. Um, other favored ways are, um, if you have like a lot of, a lot of bustles, like French bustles, like five or 10 or something like that. A lot of people like to color code their ribbons and they just have ribbons that you tie together. The one thing that I think is unfortunate about ribbons is that they can kind of slip the bow or the knot that they do it can kind of slip and it can kind of, the bustle can end up sagging. Uh, but I do love that you can color code them. But you can color code these as well, can't you? You could paint them different colors and then let your um, your bustle loop thread correspond with the color of your hook. So that's cool. So yeah, also flat buttons, of course, are great for French bustles. If you can find a good flat button, you can really count on not to break. Um, but then they don't feel them when they sit on them. So that's cool. And then do you guys remember what my favorite, my favorite one is for French bustles? Does anybody remember? Anybody remember? Mine is, uh, fur hooks. I love fur hooks for French bustles because you can bend them and like shut the hook they're so bendable, but they're strong. I've never had anybody come back and complain that their fur hook broke. And I hope you know what I'm talking about with the fur hooks. The set of fur hooks, they look just like these. They're just like huge. And, and it's a softer metal. Wow, the internet's going to have a meltdown, guys. Look. Look at my nail, my finger. <laughs> They're going to have a meltdown. All right, let's see. All right, so Maria. Oh, Silke, Merry Christmas to you all. Thank you, Silke. That's so sweet. Maria, I have a question. When you hem a gown that has a long train, I have found that I have to hem all the way around to make it even for when bustling the dress. Is there anything that you would suggest? Um, well, I don't hem all the way around because most of my brides where I'm from, they like a long train and it's like, yeah, better not touch it. So a lot of times I do the footprint reduction though. So you're going to hem in the front of the dress and then at the side seams, I would bring it in to where there's only an inch or so on the floor. And then I keep the full length of the train in the back. That's typically more what I do. Um, and guys, we are seeing the train shape where it's very long and it's almost got like this extra medallion piece in the back. In that instance, um, like you might want to do a triple bustle where you got the two to get up your two back quarters. And then for the back, I would stack two bustles. So I would do a single traditional and then another single traditional right under it. And that gets that extra length up. So that's kind of how I've been solving that issue with these train styles that we see right now that have that really ornate extra bit of length at the very end. Um, but yeah, I mean, some brides do want their train shortened just to bring kind of it into proportion for their stature or also... Um, make it more appropriate for their venue. You know, they may have bought a train that they felt like was appropriate in this big, huge cathedral, but it's not appropriate um, for their barn wedding or, you know, whatever. So sometimes that does happen. 
but we don't we don't typically have to hem the train just to solve a bustling issue. There's usually a way to bustle it. Usually. Sometimes those back quarters, we do have to kind of narrow them in to get it to work. So let's see. Irene Hall, welcome. I use that drapery ring technique and the bride loved it. Fur hooks are a great idea. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays to you too, Irene. You guys see her custom emojis, don't you? She's get the, she gets those because she's a BST bestie. You can see it says bestie by her name and her name's in green. So it's still okay. But I think that's like the most fun part of the uh, membership for the channel. I think it's like $1.99 a month or something like that. But you get these custom emojis. What fun. And we have like my Monstera leaf. We have... Um, Sewing machine. Yes, Irene, thank you for showing it. Do machine. Show a machine. I love the machine one. Um, let's see. Yeah, so there's lace. There's the gown, the Monstera leaf, the machine. There you go. There's the machine. I did it a red eye. Isn't that fun? And then there's like the needle and the shears that you see that she commented before. So, and those only work... Um, on my channel, I think. I think they're channel specific. I mean, that'd be kind of cool if we could use them all over the platform. I ought, to, I ought to try that. All right, I'm gonna try to not hang up on you guys. There we go, I'm back. My, um, sorry about that. My son, um, he has diabetes. Wretched, wretched disease. I just hate it, it's terrible. But his, um, his alarm goes off sometimes and Obviously, we can't cut it off, so we don't want to cut it off. So that's what that was. But thank you guys for hanging in there with me. So any other questions? Everybody's kind of quiet today with sewing questions. We don't have to stay on if you guys, I know you got stuff to do with the holidays. We can just do the 30-minute 30, 30 mark if we need to today. I was also going to wind bobbins. I, I like to hand wind um, my invisible thread bobbins. So let's see. So, okay, I have an unused walking foot industrial jukey. I was thinking of remodeling it for applique work and getting it a table and an oil pan. Do you think that's possible? Hmm. That's a good question. Honestly, Silke, I mean, you could look into it. There are um, certified mechanics for Juki. They have mechanics certified specific and they're extremely knowledgeable and you could always ask them about that. But I feel like a walking foot is so like distinct for its job. It's so beneficial. I would probably lean personally toward selling the walking foot like getting it up and running and smooth and everything to sell it. And then I would just buy a, a new Juki that's set up for doing what we do. Um, so that's what I would do. Or I would sell it and find an old singer and convert it. And I show you how to do that in my video of how I refurbed um, my old singer to be an applique machine. I've done it for two machines and it's so easy to do and it's so easily reversible and I feel like their motor is the appropriate strength. I've had a walking foot before that the motor, um, okay, so the pulley was a different size so that there was a lot more torque and the motor just ran faster than what I needed for a regular sewing machine. It was just really workhorse to the point of like being unsafe. So um, I'm thinking you might end up having to convert more than you would expect. And you would have to convert a whole lot less if you literally just got an antique singer and converted it such as like this guy over here, you know, I just, um, I just removed the feed dogs and then put the stippling darning foot on 
and that was that, you know, I changed out the light bulb. <laughs> that was actually a bigger job than you would think. It was um, rusted in. It was, it was rusted in pretty bad. I'm trying to get you guys back to where you were. All right, let's see the comments. Oh, okay, Silky. So you already have a DDL 8700, so it's an extra. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess you're just asking for my personal opinion. My personal opinion is I would sell the walking foot or keep it, and then I would get an old singer and convert the singer. That's probably what I would do. Um, but yeah, I guess ob obviously there's no reason for you to buy another Juki for your straight stitch. So yeah, it just depends on how you feel. Um, but the one that I had for a walking foot, it was built for upholstery and it just, everything was different. The pressure was greater, the tensioners, you know, like the lift on it, like everything was just a lot more difficult and the singers just like, they're so easy to find um, and, you know, yard sales and whatever, eBay, all that good stuff. They're so easy to find that I would just do that. Um, also, if you have a multi-purpose, like a multi-function home machine, they actually do lace applique work really well. If you've got one that you can drop the feed dogs and put a um, darning foot on, applique foot. They do an awesome job. So yeah, I would probably not try to change the whole nature of the beast. I would let that be a walking foot. And I don't even know that you need to get rid of it because you might you might want it for something in the future. They're, they're great for sewing bags, you know. Um, I, I like it for that, sewing bags and belts and stuff like that, straps and things. All right, let me see the comments. Let's see. Makes sense. Thank you. Would you give me a reason? <laughs> yes, I'm giving you a reason to get a beautiful old singer. That's right. I said so. Blame it on me. Hello, Angie. A BST bestie. Good afternoon from, okay. Is that Mississippi or Missouri? Oh, my word. It's been too long since I was in school. Okay, waiting on our nine degrees tonight. Ooh, it's not normal for you down south. I have a house full of kids and grandkids cooking, not sewing this week. Yay! I do many prom dresses and I do not offer bustle. Okay, girl. You do what you love. If you know what, if you don't like putting in bustles, don't do it. I had a sewist friend of mine. It was so funny. She had been sewing professionally for like, you know, 30 years or something. And she was just like, you know, I don't like doing zippers. I never have. So I just decided I'm not going to do zippers anymore. And do you know, she got by with that. It didn't hurt her one bit. She just, if people came by with something that needed to be corrected with a zipper, she just said, oh, I don't do that. And she had plenty of work. She did just fine. Isn't that funny how that works out? So, yeah, you do you. If you don't want to do bustles, don't do them. Um, yeah, so we've got um, our wood stove. Uh, we were up through the night feeding that. And um, it was just so bitter cold. We have going in our house, we have oil heat. We have a wood stove, an electric fireplace, and then my son also has a radiator heater, and so does my daughter. We have that much heat going right now in our house, and our poor dog was still freezing yesterday morning. Um, his little nose was so cold, but it just takes a lot. Our house is not insulated. Wasn't that a great idea somebody had? It was built back in the 50s. Somebody hand-built it. It's such a cool story, though. Um, it was built. There was this lady in my town. She was like the town seamstress for uh, probably like 50 or 60 years. She was she was quite elderly and she had been sewing since she was very young. So she was like the town, you know, it's like the, the fixture kind of thing. Right. And um her dad hand built, I live in her home place, 
don't get excited. It's an extremely small house. <laughs> I live in a 900 square foot house, um, but he hand built that house. And so it was such a cool thing for me when I found that out. I was like, oh, like what a heritage. Like she worked all those years. And then like here I'm the sewist in town now. And we had a great relationship. She was so precious. And then I was like living in the house that her dad built. It was just a real like passing the torch kind of moment, you know. I am totally not doing these methodically. Like I mentioned, I'm just going around touching them up over and over <laughs> after this video is over and these are dried. I'm probably going to do another coat on this, um, on the top part of the hook, like this part of the hook. So don't get alarmed there. So let's see. They only wear their dresses for an hour for presentation. Would you still offer the bustle? Thank you for all you do for us. Merry Christmas. Well, Angie, if you don't hate doing them and you want to make money, I would offer the bustle because you can make extra money off of it. it. It is money on the table. It's very easy. to. They're very easy to do. And they're also very easy to like um, teach one of your kids or grandkids and pay them to do them. And um, if you don't want to do it, so that's kind of cool. Most of the time, like I rarely sew a bustle anymore. Most of the time, my girls that come in, like my lace pickers and my lace sewers, they they sew in the bustles as well. So it's a it's a handy thing to kind of delegate. Let's see our other comments here. Erin, <laughs> she's getting confirmation. Yep, I stopped doing zippers in September. It's not economically good for me anymore. It takes too long and no profit. Yeah, guys, if you do zippers, you need to charge out the nose for them. I don't touch a zipper for anything less than $90. We start at 90 for me messing with a zipper. Um, and then, of course, it goes up from there if there's like buttons and loops and beadwork and all that kind of stuff. So, so Angie, Mississippi, thank you. That was actually, that was kind of my first guess. Missouri is MO, right? This is what I'm thinking. But I'm not... Um, I'm not very sharp on that right now. <laughs> I do still uh, volunteer at my kids' school. I still teach a few days a week, um, but I don't teach anything to do with that. I teach reading. So if I, if I taught that, I would be sharp on it. Any other questions, guys? If not, I'm going to hop off. And let you guys have a Merry Christmas because it is Sunday. My family, we don't really do anything for Christmas. We kind of get together um, on Christmas Eve, like for a meal. And then um, on Christmas Day, I just told my husband, I was like, tell me what you want me to cook. And that's what we'll have like on Christmas afternoon. But we don't really have like a lot of traditions around the holiday. So I know some people do, some people have like, you know, they got to go to five different relatives houses and they play like gift exchange games and you know, whatever. We don't do any of that. When, when I was growing up, we had so much of that. It, it kind of like burned me out and it made me really like, really dislike the holidays. It was just so materialistic and busy and just competitive and just gross. So we don't do any of that stuff. <laughs> you got to make it, you got to make it whatever, you know, feels good and positive to you, right? A good family feeling. So, all right, I'll look at the comments real quick and then we'll head off. Oh, Angie, it's not that I don't want to do them. They've never asked for them. Okay. Well, yeah, if they have a train, you could try pinning it up and showing them what they could do. Um, and then if they don't want to do it, that's fine. So, okay, a bride of mine wants to purchase a second identical gown from her store to use for sleeve fabric because the fabric order isn't guaranteed till April. I cringe at the thought. Wow. Yeah. Well, you can harvest a lot of fabric if they, if they have like sometimes what they have is like a severely reduced, like greatly reduced floor sample. And you can use that for fabric. 
That's actually pretty commonplace. I get gowns, damaged gowns donated all the time from local bridal shops for me to kind of harvest off of them to work on the gowns that come through from them. So that's actually kind of industry standard. So that's going to be okay. I know it makes you cringe, but it's going to be okay. Oh, okay. Banner and fun. I think you already asked this question up above and I forgot it. I'm so sorry. Let me go back and read it. Is it possible to just pinch the fabric to a strapless wedding dress to create a sweetheart neckline? How many ways can you make a sweetheart neckline? Okay, I actually have a video on this. Um, I think it's one of them where my audio is bad and the music is annoying, but the content is still gold. So if you can stand it, go watch that. So yeah, a lot of my brides do have me do the pinched neckline. Um, you can do the pinch or the cutout. Um, and the pinched obviously is quite a bit cheaper. Um, and sometimes the only problem you have with the pinched is like, of course they got to like the look of the pinched. A lot of brides do like it because it makes the bust look fuller. So if she's a more, you know, um, willowy kind of bride, she might want that. Um, but the big question is, is their boning behind where you want to pinch. If they've got that straight piece of boning up in the center front, you might have to cut it off right below the bust line, cut that bit out so that you can pinch. Um, so there's that question. But yeah, the other, the sweetheart neckline is you cut it out and that's irreversible. The pinched neckline is reversible. So that's the cool thing about it. But I go into both types in that video. So Go find that on my YouTube channel, Sweetheart Neckline Bridal Sewing Techniques, and it'll come out. It'll come up. Oh, you saw the cutout video. I thought the pinching was in there. Look again. That's so funny. If it's not, I thought for sure it was. Maria, Merry Christmas to all. Enjoy your weekend. Christmas Eve is big for me, too. Yeah, you guys have some happy holidays. I know not everybody here um, celebrates Christmas or celebrates it in the same way. Um, and that's fine. Like I said, I don't I don't really celebrate it in the traditional, like, cultural American way. Um, but, yeah, you guys do you. And I hope you have a lovely vacation um, with your uh, with your family. A lovely holiday. See what else on here. And we'll say our goodbyes and we'll all just have a fabulous weekend. Take care, guys. Thank you for joining me. Stay warm. Bye.